So bienvenidos a la iglesia nuevo comienzo. And we also want to welcome all our NBC family, all our visitors, and all of you that are joining us by audio and video. All we ask you to do is prepare yourselves to receive. God has something for you. Amen. Amen. So don't let him go. Says the Lord, I want what you got for me. Amen. So praise God. Thank you, Lord. He wants to bless you, encourage you, change you, and he wants to correct you. Also, we wanted to say uh, thank you for your prayers, for your support. We're celebrating 12 years. This is our July is our anniversary month, 12 year anniversary. So we're, we wanted to say thank you, love and appreciate you. And thank you for all your support. Amen. Continue to pray for us. Amen. Praise God. And we have a special speaker for you today. The Reverend Ryan Cavanaugh is going to be here and he's going to bring the word to you. So be praying for him. Amen. He's got a message. God has given him a message for you. Amen. Amen. So don't point fingers at nobody else. He's got a message for me and it's for me. So if you don't want it, I'm going to take it off. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. So, uh, you know, uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, grab our Bibles and let's make yes. this declaration together. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is says, Bible. this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do today. I'll be taught the word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My spirit is receptive. And I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. Woo, hallelujah. Praise God. I'm excited already. I'm ready to receive. You know what? Next week, I'll give you a heads up. We're going to be talking about attitude. And you know what? Wherever you happen to go, you got to spend time with him first before you go anywhere else. Because you got to have the right attitude. Amen. Yeah. And if you're not in the right attitude, the world is going to have you ASAP. Quick. Quick. Yeah. Amen. So I got a couple of nuggets before I, the Reverend comes up. Amen. And then this is a, a scripture a nugget for you. It says, God isn't looking for ability, He's looking for availability. Uh -huh. God does not qualify the call or calls the qualified he qualifies the call amen let me read it to you again it says god does not call the qualified he qualifies the call so you know what don't be waiting for the world to approve you god has already approved you as a matter of fact he said he's called to you he's anointed to you and he's equipped you to do whatever mission he's got for you and he's yes. got a mission for you you just got to spend time with him and you'll find out what it is. Amen. And the Bible says also says you can do all things through Christ things. who strengthens you. Mm -hmm. So you got to get stay connected to the source. He is your main source. And if you stay connected to him, you're going to be able to do what he's called you to do. Amen. Amen. The main thing is you got to stay connected to the word because that's what we need. We need the word of God. Amen. Another one is this. Make a difference today. Bless someone with the words of love, encouragement, and hope. Sow kingdom seeds, words that produce kingdom fruit. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. So with that, I'm just going to say, Reverend Ryan, come on up. And uh, we're ready to receive whatever God has given you. Amen. Amen. So praise God. Amen. Welcome, brother. Thank God you. bless you. God bless you. Well, praise God, praise God. <sighs> so, it's an honor and a privilege to be here. I know Pastor gets tired. He's here all the time, every Sunday, every Sunday, every Sunday. And so I come up here to kind of give him a little break. So, so, starting up this morning, I want you to know that there were, was a cat who died and went to heaven. <laughs> and God said, you were very faithful to your people that you had you. You know, what can I do for you? Well, you know, I've had to sleep on floors and under mattresses and stuff. I'd really love a soft, big, soft bed. God says, okay. So God, there's this bed, the cat got under, just kind of did the crawling thing and turned around and lay down and Shortly later, nine, ten mice died and went to heaven. And God says, well, what can I do for you? You know, we've had cats chases, dogs chases. The lady of the house had a broom chasing us out of the house and everything. We'd like to have some roller skates so we can go faster. Okay, so God gave us roller skates. 
A few days later, God went and checked on the cat. The cat was just purring and purring and purring. And how are you doing? Oh, I am doing wonderful. This is so great. And uh, he gave me uh, meals on wheels. That was awesome too. <laughs> So today we're going to talk about stepping out of your comfort zone. Mm. And this speaks to me as much as anybody, because let me tell you, I do not like change. Mm. I don't know many people who do like change, but as I was going over this, I was trying to think of some things that we as humans go through for our stepping out of our comfort zone. One of the things is dating. Oh my goodness, when I was a kid, dating just, you know, your knees are knocking, you know, and your hands are all sweating, you couldn't say the right words, and he mm. was horrible, you knew that if you asked the girl out, she was going to say no, and all the rejection, and all the pain that went with it, and breaking up, and oh, it's horrible. And applying for a job, I hated that. No. Applying for a job, because you know, so the answers that you give may not be what they're looking for. Right, and, right. You know, it's just like, I don't know what to put on here. And it's very frustrating. And when you get that, that job, new job, you don't know what is entailed in doing the job. You don't know the rules. You don't know the techniques. You don't know the things that they're looking for in an employee. And there's always, always, always mistakes when you first start. You're always messing up. You know, and quite often when I got a job, I oh, they're going to fire me because I messed up again. And, you know, a good a good employer will keep working with you, keep working with you, and keep working with you until you get it right. Mm -hmm. You'll get an employee's handbook, you'll get a manual, you'll get an instruction book, yep. something you'll get to help you get through that. <laughs> Marriage. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Don't get me started on this one. But, you know... When you finally meet that right one, you know, and it's just like, oh, and you ask her to marry you, or marry, ask, you know, sometimes women ask the guys, you know, there's always that, where she says no. What if the ring's not good enough? What if, what if, what if, you know? Where are we gonna, where are we gonna live? All the different things that go in your mind when you're doing this, and then comes kids. Oh my goodness. I wish there were the instruction books that came along with the kids, but there's not. Every child is different, every situation is different, every parent is different, yep. and you are not in your comfort zone, especially your first kid. Now, fourth, second, third, fourth, you know, it's like, yeah, whatever. The first kid, you know, no one touches the kids, you know, everything's gotta be super sterile, and everything's gotta be just perfect. Second, third kid, like, here, take my kid for a while, I'll get <laughs> You know, it's, it's so different, but stepping out of your comfort zone, raising kids, then once they get in their teens, there is no instruction book for oh, teens. Lord. It is like, where did this child come from? <laughs> Whose child is this? It's not mine. It must be yours. Oh, gosh. And then, where I am, retirement. <laughs> you know, having worked ever since I was 14, so instead of not having to get up, you know, the alarm goes off, not having to do things, the boss, I still have a boss, but to <laughs> marriage, you got a boss. Amen, brother. <laughs> Wait, Tim, brother. <laughs> so it's one of those things that you never truly get out of your, get out of a comfort zone. You, uh -huh. you can't find a comfort zone sometimes, but sometimes <laughs> when you find that one thing that you can feel comfortable in, you want to stay there. <laughs> You don't want to get out of what makes you comfortable. Okay. Oh, gosh. And a lot of times, it's sin. Mm. When you find something in sin, oh, you feel comfortable. You, you understand this. Everything is going good. You, I know. I know why this is happening. And then someone comes to try to tell you about Jesus. They want you to leave your comfort zone and step out to something totally unknown. It's like I don't know. So there's some biblical examples of Bible characters stepping out of their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. How many know about Noah? Mm -hmm. 
So I'm going to give you some scriptures. I'm not going to read all the scriptures containing to all these different Bible characters. I'll give you the scripture. I want you to go back and read and find out all the details about this person. But Noah, he had never heard of an ark. Didn't know what an ark was. Didn't know how to build an ark. When God said build an ark, you know, we jokingly say, Noah says, yeah. What's an ark? Mm -hmm. You know, he's going to say, I'm going to send rain. Yeah, what's <laughs> rain? It had never rained before. Mm -hmm. So, for all these years, Noah and his sons were building this ark, and everybody was laughing at him, teasing him. Mm -hmm. He stepped out of his comfort zone and obeyed God, yes. built the ark. All the animals came in there. Mm -hmm. I can hear Noah. Now, who's going to clean up this mess in here? <laughs> That's what he got the sons for, oh, I guess. God. But he stepped out of his comfort zone, and through him, the human race was, was continued. And Moses, chapter in Exodus chapter four, verse ten, God told him to go to tell Pharaoh to let the Egyptians go. See, he was yeah. raised by the Egyptians. He wound up seeing an Egyptian beating on one of the Israelites. He killed the Egyptians, and he realized that the Israelites weren't going to help him, so he fled. He ran away. And he went and joined up with Jer uh, Jethro. Thank you, so Jericho. Jethro, and married one of his daughters. And for 40 years, 40, 40 years, he tended his sheep. Out there in the wilderness, nice and comfortable. No cares, just taking care of the flock, going home, eating a good meal, and go back to work the next day. And one day, he's doing that on the backside of the wilderness, he noticed his bush was on fire. So he walks over, looks at it, and you know, the bush is not being burned up and not being consumed. So he hears his voice. And it's God is telling him, you know, basically he says, take off your shoes for the ground you're standing on is holy ground. Yes. Now, I'm pretty sure that Moses was thinking God was going to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. But God had a different plan. Yes. He wanted Moses to go do that. He goes, right. Uh no. I'm not, who, who am I to do this? I'm not qualified. I just say it all the time. I'm not qualified. Mm. You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm slow of speech. I think he had a stutter. <laughs> but God said, your brother can speak for you. Mm -hmm. But as you go read yeah. the scriptures, mm -hmm. Aaron didn't speak. He was Moses who was doing the talking. Yeah. Yeah. God used Moses, even though he said he wasn't qualified, God used him. Mm -hmm. Abraham. Can you imagine what it would be like if God says, all right, I want you to pack up everything mm. and leave. I'll show you where you're going to go. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't do that. You know, I've got to turn the phone off. I've got to do, you know, <laughs> do all this other stuff. I can't just have to leave. You know, I've got to make a you know, I have to find out what my new address is going to be so I can have my mail forwarded. All the different things, have the cable turned up over there. You know, and all this. You know God says, I want you to go. He didn't question him. He packed up all his stuff, all his, everybody was with him. Yes. And he left. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the greatest things. I can't imagine what it would be like to just up and leave. Pam and I are planning on moving to um, San Angelo. You know, there's a lot of preparations. We already know where we're going to go, where, no, where no. God wants us. There's a lot of things to get there. But to up and leave is not quite the same thing. That's it. And Esther. Mm. Oh, yes. Esther stepped out of her comfort zone when she became queen. Mm -hmm. And she knew that she had all the children of Israel were supposed to be being killed. 
her uncle told her about this and he said go to the king and you know uh, have a pro proclamation made by him that they're going to be saved so Esther knew that she went to him and it wasn't favored he was going to she could be stoned she could be killed so she fasted and prayed and prepared herself mm -hmm. and when she finally went to the king mm -hmm. he saw her out there in the lobby and he held out his scepter to her and she came to him and said what do you want mm -hmm. make a long story short mm -hmm. she wanted the children of israel saved but mordecai, mordecai her uncle was behind her praying for her and guiding her yeah but God was with her because she could have not found favor with That's the it. king and been killed. Sometimes we're put in situations where our life may be put in danger. Mm. But God is faithful. God is yes. with us. She stepped out of her comfort zone and the children of Israel were saved and the one who was plotting against them mm -hmm. wound up being killed. Yes. Hung, yes. Was hung. Yes. David. Went from being a shepherd mm -hmm. to being king of, of Israel. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine the things that were going through his mind, you know, when he was chosen to be king, anointed, and then went to be king. He goes, I don't have the slightest clue of what I'm supposed to do. Mm -mm. Where is the instruction man? <laughs> you know, who, who's, who's, my, who's my person I go to mm -hmm. to help me know what to do, where to sit, how to stand, mm -hmm. how to make proclamations, how to judge my people, how to do what's right. Mm -hmm. Even though he made mistakes, even though he sinned, he stepped out of his comfort zone and yeah. allowed God to work through him. Right. He slew Goliath. Mm. You know, that, I'm sure that wasn't comfortable for him. <laughs> I mean, he knew who God was. Yes. Praise God. And Saul said, here, you got to wear my suit of armor. He goes, I haven't tried this. I can't. Mm -hmm. I haven't proved it. He put it on and it just over. Too big. Too, way too big. Because Saul was head and shoulders taller than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And little David, you know, I've heard him say he was 12, 13, 14 years old. Just a little boy. Mm -hmm. But he knew. He knew his God. So he went down to the brook, got five smooth stones, and faced Goliath on. Yes, he did. You know, I can imagine that most of us, when Goliath said, Today I'm going to have your head, and the, <laughs> the birds in the field are going to eat on your carcass, mm -hmm. most of us said, Okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Not David. Not David stepped out in faith, out of his comfort zone, and being a shepherd, and slew Goliath. Yes, and Ruth. Ruth. She followed her mother-in-law to Bethlehem, yes. embraced the God of Israel, and was blessed with a new family and a place in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Ruth chapter 1, verse 16 through 17. Let's look at that real quick. I'm using my computer, my phone here. It's a lot faster for me to find stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Ruth 1. Ruth 1, 16 through 17. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee. Because see, her mother, mother-in-law's husband died. Her husband died. Her sister-in-law's husband died. And the two girls were with their mother-in-law. And... Then we said, just go ahead and go. Go back to your homes. Mm. And I said, no, I'm going to stay with you. Well, the other sister-in-law left. Naomi, or Ruth, stayed with her. Said, entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from falling after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go. Uh -huh. And whether thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people should be my people, and thy God, my God. Yes. Of course, thou diest, thou wilt die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also if I'd be death part thee and me. Listen, 
She didn't know the language where she was, maybe. Mm -hmm. Didn't know the customs. She was there for a while. But it's something that she had to learn. Mm -hmm. There are things when we get, we have to change locations, change towns, change jobs. Sometimes we have to get moved to different yeah. towns, different countries, different cities, whatever. We have to learn the city, we have to learn where the streets are, we have to learn you know, the customs of that town, we have to yes. learn where, where to buy groceries, where to get gas, all the different things. Mm -hmm. And it's not comfortable. No, you know, not. you have to ask a lot of questions and make a lot of mistakes in doing this kind of stuff. Right. But the main focus that we're going to talk about today is Gideon. Mm. So let's turn to Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6, starting with verse 11. There the angel, there, there came an angel of the Lord and sent unto an oak, which was in Ophrah, and pertained unto jo Joash, the Abrazite, mm -hmm. and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. See, the Midianites had oppressed the Israelites so bad, everything, all the crops they had, they come and get them. All the cattle, all the things, they just, they stole them, they ate, they ate them. Mm -hmm. You know, so all the children of Israel were hiding in caves. They were fearful for their lives and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said the Lord is with thee thy mighty man of valor <laughs> they are hiding in caves they're, they're scared they're fearful mm. and Gideon said unto him oh my Lord if the Lord be with me, us why then is all this befallen us and where be all of his miracles which our fathers told us of mm -hmm. saying did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt but now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us in the hands of the Midianites. Like the of the mm -hmm. You know, we see mm -hmm. and hear of the great and mighty revivals they had, mm -hmm. you know, years past. The revivals wouldn't be just like a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. There'd be weeks Week. and months long. Yes. Yes. There'd be hundreds, if not thousands of people who come to God, miracles performed. People's eyes got restored. Mm -hmm. People's limbs grew. Our pastor I had before, he said that he was playing guitar in one of these revivals. Mm -hmm. He went for six weeks, and people were getting healed. People were doing this, you know. And I guess he had a cataract or something on his eye. Anyway, something was bothering him, you know. And his eyes started watering. He took his glasses off, and he wiped his eye. And this is what it was. fell off in his hand. Oh, my gosh. You know, you can see. Mm -hmm. He said, I saw limbs grow. So if God can do those things then, mm -hmm. why does he not do them today? Yeah. He does. Yes. But a lot of times it's because of our lack of faith. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're not comfortable, you know, getting in front of people and asking for prayer. We're not comfortable praying in front of people. We're not comfortable in lifting our hands because somebody may see us. Mm. We're not comfortable in doing what God has called us to do. Mm. Now, in church, sometimes we're just, you know, running around the church, you know, our hands raised, just praising God. You lock out the doors like, <laughs> yep. well, we'll pray for you. Mm -hmm. You know, and never never utter a word. Mm -hmm. We God tells us to go talk to someone. Mm -hmm. There we are. Who am I to go do that? You know, there's somebody more qualified. There's somebody who can speak better than I am. I am not ready for this yet. I'm, I'm kind of scared. When God calls to do something, Pastor has said this over and over and over again. And someday we'll catch on to it. He'll move on to something else. <laughs> but God does not call the qualified. Mm -hmm. He qualifies the call. Yes, yes. So if there is someone who God is dealing with about doing something for Him. Yes. And we find every excuse under All the right. sun not to do it. Come on now. I know there's numerous times God has told me to do something and I didn't do it. Mm. Mm. You know, somebody 
may have died and not been saved. I don't know. But I've learned when God says do something, mm -hmm. you better do it. So Gideon was listening to God. And God says, bring all the, all the men together. Mm. He said, if any of them are fearful, because we're going to go attack the Midianites. Mm. If any of them are fearful, have them leave. Mm. That's it. And a bunch of them left. <laughs> Out of 22,000, there's like 10,000 left. Yeah, that's a lot. And he says, I'm sure in his mind, he's like, okay, we got 10,000 men. We can go attack the, the Midianites and we got to make God says, no, you still got too many people. Yeah, Are you crazy? <laughs> I can just hear him thinking to himself, no. God says, no. And so if they're, you know, besides being fearful, if they've got kids and stuff, they left. So God eventually said, take him down to the to brook and have him drink water. And watch them as they do it. The ones who put their face in the water drinking that way, those were rejected. Mm. But the ones who dipped their hands in the water, I can kind of look, see them kind of looking around. Yeah. So they're kind of watching. I said, those are the ones I want. Mm -hmm. 300. Mm -hmm. Out of 22,000, there was 300 that God chose. Yes. So, if we, in our knowledge of our job, knowledge of whatever we're doing, a great speaker, great minister, God called to do something else, if we use those same talents to do it, we can say we did it. But God takes us out of our comfort zone, so when something wonderful happens, when miracles are performed, when people's lives are changed, God gets the glory for it, not us. Not us. That's it. So, it is going, okay, I just kind of wonder if this is really going to happen. God said, send, send two men down to the camp at night and listen. God had already prepared the battle. He already prepared the victor. And the men listened and said, what, the two men were talking, said, yeah, I, I had a dream. You know, and this, the big old rock came in and we were wiped out. So they realized that God was talking about Israel defeating the Midianites. So they went back and told Gideon, yes. and so they prepared for yeah. the battle. That's it. They got a torch. They put a, a container over it. Hmm. And they, um, Gideon said, All right, I want you to split up. We're going to encircle the camp. And when I say, I'm going to break this lamp open where the light is shining, and we're going to say, You know, glory to God and to Midian, we're going to yell, scream, and everybody's going to freak out. <laughs> and wound up, they started killing themselves. Mm -hmm, they sure did. Then they took off running. And they chased them. They got other people involved chasing them. God's victory was because Gideon obeyed God. He stepped out of his comfort zone yeah. and he listened to God. Yes, he and great and mighty miracles were done. Mm -hmm. yeah. But more recently, we find people who, before this, there's Peter. Mm. Peter was a fisherman. Yes. And a very successful fisherman. So in Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4, we're going to go with 4, 18 to 22. 18 to 22. Yes. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two men. Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea for their fishers. Mm -hmm. He said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Yes. Okay, what's the purpose of fishing for men? 
<laughs> you don't sell them, you can't eat them. Why, why are we going to, we're fishermen. And, but straight away, they left their nets and followed him. Their comfort zone was their boat, was their ship. Mm -hmm. They knew that. Yeah. They had no clue of what was in front of them. All they knew was they were going to follow Jesus. Yeah. And going on from thence, he, uh, he saw other two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, his father, many of their nests, he called. And immediately they left the ship, and their father followed him. Jesus went all about all Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Parallel, earn as you earn as you learn. Yeah. <laughs> you know, on the job training. On the job training. Yeah. So they watched Jesus. They learned what he did, how he did things. It was the thing that would eventually would help them in their ministry. Yes. See, Jesus is not a God of comfort. Hmm. Jesus is one who causes conflict. Because <laughs> when he starts stirring things up, everything is kind of chaotic. Oh, yeah. we, Jesus didn't call us to be comfortable. He called us to get out of our comfort zone yes. and follow him. Yes. No matter what he calls us to do, he will provide the means. Yes, he will. He will prepare He will prepare a way for us, mm -hmm. make the crooked path straight and the high road and flat and low. He will make the way for yes. us. Thank you, Lord. Paul. Paul went from persecuting the church to becoming on the road to Damascus to do more harm to the church. Oh, yeah. God struck him blind. He fell off his horse. Mm. You know, and eventually they took him into Jerusalem and they, God worked with somebody else, Ananias. They don't want you to go lay hands on Brother Saul and pray for him and heal him. And just, uh, you do realize this is the one that is persecuting the church and killing people and I'm making sure we're on the same page here Lord I, mean, I want to make sure that you want me to go to him yeah yes that's what I want you to do so do you want me to get his eyesight restored he wrote two thirds of the New, New Testament. Testament. <laughs> he was imprisoned. He went on missions, mission journeys, establishing churches. Yes. A man who was going against God in his comfort zone, doing what he thought was right, right. Mm -hmm. to stepping out of his comfort zone, doing something entirely different. Yes, yes. 180 degrees going the other direction. Mm -hmm. they were in prison mm -hmm. in shackles in the inner prison yes. it was you know I get this vision in my head it's dank it's moldy you know yeah, water yeah. dripping maybe sure. and, you know they're in the stocks and their hands are all tied up and mm -hmm. I'm sure they haven't bathed in a while <laughs> the oh, restroom okay. facilities aren't quite as good as they are today no I'm sure they weren't you know and I'm sure it's just Nasty, nasty down there. You know, I can't imagine the stench of all the prisoners down there mm -hmm. and the same thing. And midnight hour, they began to praise God, lift up their voice in praise. Mm -hmm. God answered the prayers. The jail shook, the doors opened. Yeah. You know, the guard is gonna keep trying he's gonna kill yourself. Mm -hmm. Do yourself no harm. Mm -hmm. We're all all of us are still here. Still here. You know? Mm -hmm. So what must I do to be saved? Mm -hmm. So through that experience, he only led the jailer in his house to, to Jesus. Mm -hmm. But he got to go, you know, talk to, to uh, Pilate and all the, all the people from in the ministry that he went with 
because he obeyed God. Yes. He stepped out of his comfort zone and God blessed him. It wasn't because of him, because his life was completely turned upside down. Mm -hmm. God used him to reach us. I'd like you to turn to Jeremiah chapter 29. Mm -hmm. I'm sure most of you know where I'm going to go with this. Yep. Mm -hmm. We go to verse 11. Mm -hmm. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart, yes. and I will be found of you, saith the Lord. I will turn away, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all nations, from all places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again to a place, hence I cause you to be carried away captive. So God is moving in your life. There's something in each of our lives that God is dealing with. I don't know what it is. I know my life, I know what it is. There's something in each one of our lives that God is dealing with us about. We're going, I'm not sure. God, is that really you talking? Because I, I don't know. Yeah. So going back to Gideon, he didn't question God too. He says, okay, if this is really what you want, I want you to show me something. I'm going to take a fleece, I'm going to lay it down on the ground. When I wake up in the morning, the fleece will be wet and all the ground around is going to be dry. Gets up in the morning, he rings that fleece out and gets a bowl of water. Okay. Well, maybe that's just a coincidence. So let's flip it around. Tomorrow morning, the fleece will be dry on the ground around and I'll be wet. Sure enough, that's the way it was. I have done the same thing in my life. God, if this is truly what you want, then this is going to happen. When I was taking my EMT classes, I didn't have any money. You know, and I had it, the class was going to be like 40, 45 miles away, both ways. You had to buy the books and gas and all this stuff. And I don't know if I can do this. So we sat there, my wife and I sat at the post office in our car and we prayed about it. I, I filled out the money order for the amount of the class. I mailed it. Only X amount of people are going to get in the class. Mm -hmm. To God, if this is what I'm supposed to do, then I'll get in. If it's not, that's okay. You know, I won't get in the class. Well, I got in. So, God said don't tempt him. Uh -huh. But we can ask, Lord, you know, I just need to make sure that I understand what you're, what you're wanting me to do. Mm -hmm. I need further instructions. I need guidance. Yeah. Help me, Lord, to understand what you want me to do. Because yeah. dipping out of a comfort zone, Lord, I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to fall. I don't want to fail you. Mm -hmm. Help me understand what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. and Pastor, when you accepted the call of the ministry, was it like, oh yeah, I know exactly what to do. Everything is going to no. be lined out <laughs> step by step by step. Uh -oh. I know we're going to have this church building we're going to have you know, oh so I'm going to tell you right now, in this church right now, we're chasing 200 souls. We've caught like 10, 12, 15 of them. Hmm. We're chasing 200. Hmm. I believe in God for 200 souls for this church. Where they are, I don't know. But if we, as Christians, don't go out of our comfort zone and reach them, yeah. the highways and hedges and the byways and yeah. compel them to come in, The lost generation out there. Yes. So each of us has to get out of our comfort zone. Whether it's God is calling us to a new a new job, God is 
open the door for us for a, a, kind of a relationship with a, a man or a woman. Not if you're already married. That's not what I'm saying. If you're single, the guy is giving you someone else. God is not going to have you divorce somebody because of somebody else. That's not how it works. He's not going to bring somebody else into your marriage also. You're not going to have something on the side, you know, just in case this one bails, this one. God does not work like that. That would, tell you what, that would not be my comfort zone. My wife would kill me. She wouldn't care about the other woman. She'd kill me dead. I mean, dead. There would be no if, ands, or buts. If, no, it's this, this not even going to happen. No. He wish he was dead. Oh, she would. I, my wife. <laughs> would you do the funeral for me? <laughs> Pam says, you can have all the women you want to, but don't come home. But if you do, you're dead. You're dead. So God is not the author of confusion. Amen. That would be very confusing to me. I told our kids when they're growing up, if you have a girlfriend, you break up, find another one, you have the same first name. Oh gosh. Because if you get into a fight, an argument, and you call that one by the wrong name, it is not good. I did I made that mistake one time. I'm just telling you right now. Don't do this. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 14. Matthew 14. <laughs> okay. My wife loved me, but she didn't love me enough to let me be stupid. <laughs> Matthew 14, 22. Verse 22. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship to go before him onto the other side. Well, he sent the multitudes away. When he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. We all need time apart to pray. Yes. yes. It's, it's beautiful for a family to pray together. But there needs to be that time set apart yeah. to pray. Yes. And he went up to the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was down in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Mm -hmm. And the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. That's Jesus' comfort zone. Mm -hmm. That's not a big deal to him. He, he can do this. <laughs> when, Jesus, when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a spirit. It's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. Mm. But straightway Jesus spake to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, mm -hmm. be not afraid. Mm -hmm. See, they're, they're used to being in the ship. Mm -hmm. They knew what the, the storms were. They have been through the storms before. Mm. And seeing something walking on the water oh, is the not water. in their comfort <laughs> zone. That's okay, that's not out there. Oh, no, no, no. And Peter mm -hmm. answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come to thee on the water. Mm -hmm. He said, come. When Peter was come down out of the ship, mm -hmm. I don't know how big a ship this is. <laughs> you know, if he had to go call down the ropes on the side or just stepped off the side onto a, mm -hmm. I don't know, didn't say. Come, and when Peter was come out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Yes. Comfort zone. Walking on water. Yeah. Now I have walked on water when it's like a half inch deep. Mm -hmm. You know, that's no big deal. I can do that. Water is half inch deep. I can walk on that water. Mm -hmm. But this is a lake. Yeah. Oof, sea of Galilee. It's not. That's it. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna sink. You're going to drown. Mm -hmm. And when he got his eyes off Jesus, mm -hmm. when he saw the wind boisterous, he was yeah. afraid began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me! Mm -hmm. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said to him, O thou little faith, mm -hmm. wherefore didst thou doubt? Mm -hmm. When we get our eyes off of Jesus, yes. we're going to start sinking. We're oh, going yeah. to fail. We're going to make all kinds of mistakes. Yeah. 
I can't tell you the trouble you will experience if you take your eyes off Jesus. He never takes his eyes off of you. That's it. We take our eyes off of him. When we are not in his perfect will, we falter, we flounder, we you know, struggle, we go, God, where are you? Why did you leave me? God did not leave us. That's it. We left him. Yeah. A lot of people said, I found Jesus. <laughs> Jesus was never lost. <laughs> we were the ones who lost. He sought after us. He left the 99 and went after the one. You are that one yes. he went after. I am the one he went after. Amen. Somehow, he got a hold of us. Our, our, our story going to Jesus is different. But we all have to go through Jesus to get to the Father. Amen. There is no other way. And a lot of people are saying, I'm not going to put my faith into something that I can't see. I don't, I don't believe this book, the Bible, because it's written by man. Well, you found me a book that wasn't written by man. No, yeah. well, God inspired the people who wrote the book, That's the it. Bible, That's word it. for word. Yeah, yeah. Exactly how it's supposed to be. Mm. But we get out of our comfort zone sometimes and kind of, you know, we listen to this little voice in our ear. Mm. The devil's going, "That's not." true you know mm. that's not accurate you know mm. didn't god say this if we don't know the word when satan comes to us and tries to pervert the word of god mm. tries to twist it around tries to get it where it's not saying what it really says mm. we kind of go okay that yeah that makes sense and we step out of what god has called to do we step out in, into sin mm. we wonder where, where god is yeah. why he left us footprints in the sand you know there were two now there's one why because when you're in trouble I'm going to carry you so, Amen. when they were gone over they came into the land of generous thing mm -hmm. whatever it is and when the men of that place had knowledge of him they sent out all into all the country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased they saw him that they might only touch the hem of his garment, mm -hmm. as many as touched were made perfectly whole. Yes. And Peter was so close to Jesus that there was a time when he was walking through the streets, mm -hmm. they laid the people in front of him, you know, the shadow would go across yeah. him, yeah. you know, the healing. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to be that close. Mm -hmm. I want to be so close to Jesus. And when I look in the mirror, I see Jesus. I don't see me, I see Jesus. We should be that hungering and thirsting for Jesus. That God, whatever you have for me, I will willingly step out of my comfort zone and do what you want me to do. Amen. Give me the grace, give me the strength, give me the boldness, give me the, the courage to step out in faith. I don't know what you have in store for me, but Lord, here I am. Yes. Send me. Amen. Use me. Yes. Yes. You know, God will use you mightily if you will just subject yourself to Him and say, I'm yours. Do as you will. Yes. I want you to think about the potter. You know, He's making this beautiful piece of pottery. You know, and he's forming it and shaping it, and somehow it becomes marred. He remakes it, molds it. That's what happens to us. In our lives, sometimes we get marred. Sometimes we get scars. Sometimes yeah. we have things in our life that yeah. our life, our sin, has caused our, us not to be perfect. But Jesus comes along, and he molds us and makes us into what he wants us to be. But we have to be willing to be a willing vessel for him to use. Yes, yes. So right now, I want us to just close our eyes, bow our heads. I don't know who I'm speaking to right now, but 
I want you to acknowledge that Jesus is talking to you. I want you to open up your ears, your spiritual ears, and listen. God is calling you for something. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, I pray, Lord God, that you begin to move in a mighty way upon each and every one of us. And no matter what our situation is, no matter what you have put before us to accomplish, that we will, in faith believing, step out in faith, and do exactly as you have us to do. Lord, I pray for courage. I pray for boldness. I pray for the strength to do what you have for us to do. Yes. And right now, I pray that anyone who has never accepted Jesus as their Savior, that they would ask you right now in faith believing that, Lord, you are my Savior. I come to you as a sinner. I confess my sin before you. I ask that you forgive me. I accept you, Lord, and Savior. From this point on, I will follow you, I will trust you, and you will be my Savior. And I accept you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor?